The Inga, if completed, will be the world's largest hydroelectric dam and the world's largest electricity supplier. Currently, the dam exports electricity to neighboring African countries of Angola, South Africa, Rwanda and Burundi. But feasibility studies and funding from other African countries will make it possible for the project to be connected to major African electricity power poles. We investigate progress made in the Inga Dam and unpack the extent of impact the project will have if completed. The SNAL is the national company responsible for the transportation and supply of electricity to the entire country of the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 1968, construction on the first barge, Inga 1, began. It was complete in 1972. Afterward, they started construction on the second barge, called Inga 2. This one was finished 10 years after. The goal of the Inga Dam was what? It was to provide hydroelectric power to the Democratic Republic of Congo and replace the terminal diesel generated power that we were using at the time. Inga has huge hydroelectric potential. It is the number one site where there is such a high concentration of hydroelectric power. This site has a potential voltage of 44,000 megawatts, so there is no place like it anywhere in the world. Apart from Inga, there's a dam in Brazil that has 15,000 megawatts and three gorges in China with 18,000 megawatts. Which is why, realizing the massive potential of this site, we thought to develop Inga not only for the Democratic Republic of Congo, but for the entire continent of Africa. Among the international financial organizations that are helping us are, as I have already mentioned, the World Bank. A second organization that is helping us is the African Development Bank. After that, we have another source of financing that we call public-private financing, where government gets together with the private sector. In the case of the public-private sector, we have MAG Energy, who comes with their base investor, the IDC, the Industrial Development Corporation of South Africa. IDC. IDC, uh, Industrial Development Corporation de, d'Afrique du Sud. We also have the International Financial Bank and the private sector of the World Bank who have joined us in the rehabilitation of INGA. We have already done a feasibility study on the potential revenue from the export of the electricity provided by INGA. With Westco, we predict around $400 million a year. But with big INGA fully operational, we can expect $6 billion a year. So with this capacity of electricity, in 10 or 20 years, the Congo will not only talk about its potential wealth, it will actually be very wealthy. Potentiellement riche, mais pourra peut-être devenir de plus en plus riche tout court. Energy experts have warned 14 Southern African member state countries of an energy crisis in 2007 and 2008 if electricity supply is not increased in the region. In the wake of this warning, ESCOM, a major African power utility house, has established plans to generate electricity from the DRC to increase power supply into the southern region. Now, we are now joined by Mr. Fani Zulu. He is the executive manager at ESCOM. Mr. Zulu, tell us the current state of affairs at the Inga Dam and your involvement? Well, let me start by saying that there are two key projects that are, that are running here. The one is the so-called Inga 3. Mm -hmm. the, the idea here is to build a power station that can generate some 3,600 megawatts, a transmission network that would allow for high voltage transportation of the electricity connecting to the Angola, to Namibia, mm -hmm. to Botswana and all the way to South Africa. We've done excellent progress in, in terms of putting in place the institutional framework for delivering the program. Um, we've registered a company, uh, and when I say we, I am saying five countries that are involved in the project, which is South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Angola, and the DRC. We've registered a company in Botswana. Um, the energy ministers of the five participating countries have signed an intergovernmental memorandum 
Um, the chief executives of the five participating utilities have also signed an, an inter-utility memorandum. Just in September of this year, we've signed the shareholders' agreement. So we have the institutional mechanism in place to right. can deliver the project. We're now moving into the stage where we're starting the pre-feasibility work. Let me, let me focus you a bit more on ESCOM in particular and ask you what progress has ESCO made towards integrating the energy into its power grid? Well, as you may know, uh, we, we are working towards increasing our uh, electricity generating capacity beyond 2007. We see the initiative uh, coming out of the in INGA project as one of the sources of electricity mm -hmm. for the country. But we also see it as an opportunity for diversifying our energy mix. As you may know, in South Africa, we generate coal mm -hmm. or we generate via coal. Uh, the project in the INGA offers an opportunity to have a hydro source of electricity. So all the planning going forward has INGA as one of the sources of electricity for the country. In terms of the financial support, each of the five participating utilities is contributing 100,000 mm -hmm. US dollars. ESCOM is one of those that is contributing to the project. In terms of the technical work that needs to be done for the project, we have a number of technical experts who are seconded to move the project a step further. It, it is nice to hear that all these African countries are participating so well with each other. NEPAD's role in this initiative has been what? Instrumental. Uh, let me say to you that um, the, the feasibility phase of the project will require some 8 million US dollars. NEPAD has already secured that funding through the ADB. Uh, NEPAD is also, you know, working uh, very hard to make sure that uh, we, we do deliver the project because it offers massive socio-economic benefits to, to the people of the DRC, to the five countries that are participating, mm -hmm. but to the continent broadly. So NEPAD has played an instrumental role here. You mentioned the continent. Once all the phases have been completed, what will it really mean for the continent? Well, one of those few projects that offer massive benefit for, for the whole continent. We see the INGA project delivering more than almost 40,000 megawatts of electricity. That will supply electricity for the continent's needs uh, with the potential of exporting electricity to the Middle East and to Europe. One of those rare instances where, you know, the, the whole idea of um, uh, Africa being self-sufficient has been brought to fruition. Mr. Fani Zulu, the executive manager of electricity powerhouse ESCOM. Thank you for speaking to us on Timeline. You. After the break, we find out more about the cell phone industry on the African continent. You're watching Timeline here on SABC Africa. Stay with us. We'll be right back. SABC Africa.